Hi, my name is Ben. I am a solutions engineer at GitHub. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about how Copilot Chat offers a leveled up experience for GitHub's Copilot pair programmer, offers new functionality, new user experience, uh, different ways of interacting with the technology in order to help you understand your code, fix code, write new code. So Copilot Autocomplete or completion has been around for around two years now. It's been a inline pair programmer where it will make suggestions where the developer is typing using natural language context, context from the open tabs to really accelerate how quickly and, and um, the tools that developers have to write code. Copilot Chat is a new chatbot like IDE extension. So Copilot was its own extension. Copilot Chat is a new extension that offers a more conversational style of interacting with the pair programmer. This, is, this gives us some very cool new capabilities about modifying existing code, explaining code, um, new ways of interacting with the tool. Um, Copilot Chat has, is now in public beta, uh, available for all Copilot users. Uh, and I wanted to highlight today some of the different ways that it can be used to supplement your use of Copilot uh, completion or autocomplete today. So I guess instead of explaining this code base that I'm working with here, I'm actually going to ask Copilot to do so. So there's two different ways of interacting with Copilot chat. You could uh, interact in the chat window, or you could highlight uh, a piece of code in your editor, right click it, and go to Copilot. And I could start a new chat window. I could ask it to explain this, fix this, and things like that. So I'm actually going to type in the chat window to um, describe what or uh, explain what this code is doing and copilot chat is not optimized for latency um, in the same way as copilot autocomplete is copilot completion or autocomplete needs to help developers stay in the flow and and run right alongside them as they're typing copilot chat uh, is optimized for conversational um, completeness and, and correctness so um, different ways of approaching the same um, challenges. But Copilot Chat provided me a nice summary here of how this JavaScript code is setting up a basic express server with two endpoints and Swagger documentation. It talks about my math uh, um, endpoints that do add and power functions. It references the helper functions that I use to do those mathematical operations, tells me where the server is running, um, further outlines the input parameters to my API endpoints and things like that. So right off the bat, this is something that Copilot traditionally has not been able to do. It doesn't help you explain code or tell you the assumptions it's making when it's generating code. It's really an inline autocomplete style tool. So I can ask Copilot chat other general questions. So like um, not just about the code itself, but how um, what are some ways to make uh, API endpoints more secure. So it looks like Copilot is going to offer me a few different ways in which API endpoints can generally be made more secure. These include things like adding authentication, authorization, rate limiting, input validation, using a firewall, and things like that. So I think that uh, input validation is a really nice way of, of showing how I could already level up these API endpoints that I already have. So I'm going to highlight my add and power endpoint and ask Copilot chat to um, validate that the input parameters to these uh, API endpoints are numbers using native JavaScript. All right, so it's going to explain to me what tool it's going to use. And in this case, it's the is not a number function in JavaScript to check if the input parameters are numbers. It's going to give me a uh, sample code per my request, and then it's going to explain what that sample code is doing. So I find this explanation really helpful because I think as you're iterating through suggestions from Copilot today, 
it's you often don't have a lot of context on the assumptions it's making as it's giving you that suggestion, and and maybe it's not explaining why it's giving you that suggestion. So in this case, it gives a really nice explanation of, of what it's doing, and I can actually interact with this code in a few different ways. I could highlight this copy to clipboard uh, function, I could insert it at the cursor, or I could insert it into a new file or run it in the terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert it at the cursor, and now I've immediately refactored my two API endpoints to have uh, input validation to make sure that those query parameters are numbers. So now let's show how I could use Copilot to write a new endpoint. So add a new API endpoint to this application that calculates the factorial of an input parameter. So now Copilot chats thinking and it's adding a new factorial endpoint. So something that I wanna highlight here is that uh, it's gonna follow the same syntax, just like Copilot always has, it's going to bias those suggestions towards the code that's already in the application. So it, it's writing its comment, describing the endpoint in the same way that my other APIs do. It's using um, the same input validation that I've now established across my other endpoints. But one thing it hasn't done is it, it's actually included the factorial logic um, inside this suggestion, whereas in this application, you'll see that I move my math logic into these helper functions in the math utils directory. So this is something that is dramatically different from Copilot autocomplete or completion in that when you use Copilot chat, it uses all the context from the previous conversation to continue to iterate on that, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for. So I can actually ask Copilot to update the above code to use a math utils factorial helper function to perform the logic of, um, of calculating the factorial. So now it's actually, I'm able to iterate on the suggestion um, and it's even calling out its assumptions again, assuming you have a math utils factorial function in my math utils module, which I will make. Um, you can update the factorial endpoint to use the function below. And now you'll see that it is not doing all of this math logic in the API endpoint itself, but it's using math utils factorial like uh, I like it to do. Um, and now I'm going to ask Copilot to write me a math utils factorial function I can use to support this endpoint. And it's gonna kind of give me that logic uh, um, for, for this endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this here and create my math utils factorial helper function, which I'm gonna write in the style of JavaScript that uh, I'm using in this application. So you'll see in this chat window, it used um, a different format and I'm using the const uh, and module export style of writing. So I had to copy and paste just the logic behind it so that I could build uh, this factorial. So something else, all everything that we've been doing to interact with chat here has been through the window. We've shown how it's conversational. It can answer questions, not just suggest new code. Um, it can iterate on your previous prompts to it. But I can also interact with chat in the code itself. So if I were to highlight this factorial function, right click it and go to um, Copilot and generate docs, it's gonna actually suggest an inline suggestion um, uh, kind of like you would see in a pull request. I could iterate on the suggestion, I could accept it, I could discard it, but you'll see now that without having to like ask it to generate docs, I just use the doc um, slash command with that highlight capability, and I'm gonna go ahead and accept this suggestion. And now I've immediately gotten Copilot chat to write me um, a description of what this function is doing, what the input parameters are and what the return values uh, are for this function. So it can do a lot more than just inline autocomplete. It can 
we've now explained code, written new code, refactored code, generating documentation for code. So the next thing I'd like to show is actually let's test our code. So we have here a, uh, a test file. Um, we've got some new uh, some math logic, the add, pow, and factorial function. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and ask Copilot chat. Instead of going line by line, like I would with Op Copilot autocomplete, where you can see here, um, as I'm typing, I'm kind of waiting for these suggestions, uh, like I'm writing out all of the, the code myself. Let's just see if we can get chat to write it all in one go for us. So write unit tests for the functions in the math utils directory using the Mocha chai testing framework. And now I'm going to expect Copilot chat to give me uh, a really nice uh, essentially list of tests that I can run for all of these uh, test cases. So it looks like it wrote the add test one using math utils add one plus two equals three. That looks good. Two to the power of three equals eight. The factorial of five equals 120. Um, so this looks good. I'd like to be a little bit more comprehensive. So I would say like update the above tests to include um, uh, at least three, to include three scenarios for each test. Uh, for each util function. So it's going to now modify that existing code and it's writing additional test cases for each, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this so that we can look at what the code is. So we've got some add tests that include a positive and a negative number, two negative numbers. So this is definitely more um, kind of comprehensive tests. Um, we've raised numbers to the power of zero. Um, and even for the factorial, it calculated those edge cases of one for a factorial of zero and that it should throw an error for negative numbers. So I don't think this would test would pass um, because I haven't actually handled, um, well, I did do some input validation, but Something to be mindful of is that you're still responsible for this code that you're writing. Like you're still the owner, and you need to kind of work with Copilot to write the code that you're looking for and make sure that you understand it. Because um, if I were to run these tests now, I know I would have to make some tweaks. But this definitely accelerated me um, in getting these unit tests onto the page. It would have taken me a long time to type all this up, let alone start to to tweak them for my needs. So let's just look at a couple of the other slash commands here so that you'll see that we can also ask Copilot chat to simplify code, to fix bugs or security vulnerabilities um, and things like that. So there's, there's really so much that you can do with chat around the code beyond just helping you write new code. And that makes a lot of sense. As developers, we spend a lot of time understanding code, thinking about ways to make code better. Um, we're not always just adding more and more lines of code. Um, the example of like if I was trying to fix a bug, so let's say um, uh, when I was calculating the factorial, uh, I returned um, like uh, false instead of the correct like result of the factorial. If I were to highlight this and go to Copilot and say fix this. It's going to do its best effort at trying to understand what's wrong with the code. Um, sometimes it might ask you to say what exactly is wrong with it. Uh, in this case, because of generative AI's amazing pattern recognition, it just immediately saw that for calculating a factorial result is what needed to have been exported to um, to correct this function. So. That was pretty wild. All I did was change some of the parameters of the function and then highlight it and click fix. And Copilot chat identified uh, what needed to be changed. So 
this is just my quick crash course in kind of how Copilot Chat completely broadens and opens up the way in which we use these generative AI tools. Really excited for all the different things that people are going to, to build with this tool. I'll copy a link in this description of the same demo I did with just Copilot autocomplete or completion. So you can see how you would attack these problems with each tool. They're definitely meant to uh, supplement each other um, based on the preference of the developer and what problem it is that you're trying to solve. Um, thank you so much.